this is Coach Kathy, and this is Let's Talk Fluoride, Utah, okay? Thing is, I grew up in Brigham from 62 when I was four until 76 when I went down to Salt Lake for college, got my nursing degree, and then moved to California in 83, and then Washington State, and moved back to Brigham two years ago in 2013, the summer of, with having heard the news that my stepmother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, just knew that God told me, just pack up and move. See, my mom passed away when I was 18, two weeks before going to college from colon cancer. So it was just in my heart, I needed to be there and be there for my dad. So that brought me back to Brigham. The thing that brought me to the realization about fluoride was I've been here for two years. First year was fine. My health, I have complex regional pain syndrome. have had that for 19 years from a volleyball injury and pretty devastating. But nevertheless, that was my one health issue coming to Utah. The year after I was here, things started happening. Chest pains, potential gout, uh, elbow pain, shoulder pain. I'm now eight weeks post shoulder surgery, they had to cut off bone spurs as well as I had a frozen shoulder, so it was manipulated. It's been the worst eight weeks of my life outside of the RSD or the complex regional pain syndrome, getting through that. Painful, uh, I never imagined I'd be in so much pain and so fatigued, and doing this video has taken a lot of energy out of me, but it's that important because I recognize as I was the first of May I was introduced to ionized water. I just feel like God just put that right before me, right at the beginning of May. I was doing some listening to audios, doing some research, a lot of research on that. And it was actually May 21st was my surgery. Two weeks after my surgery, I was reading a book on from Dr. Peggy Parker, who's a naturopath out of Spokane, and came across this book, Time, Turn Back the Hands of Time. She's talking about the effects of oxidative stress, which in fact is the cause of pretty much every single disease we have. So that's pretty alarming, right? So one thing, ionized water is not a cure. It just helps to facilitate stopping and re reversing the oxidation, okay? So just that little info and why I was studying this. Well, I came across a page that was talking about the causes, some of the causes of oxidative stress. And when I got the word fluoride, everything stopped. In fact, I put down the book and wept and wept and wept because it was very clear to me that, and I've been perplexed, why am I all of a sudden having all these health issues that I haven't had? 55 to 57, it doesn't make sense. So I wept because it was something that I had no choice of. It was, it was upon me. You see, fluoride is a cause of oxidative stress and, and uh, diseases, which is bone spurs, um, you name it, lupus, fibromyalgia, heart disease, tooth decay, because it causes inflammation and dehydration of cells. I'll do another video on all about that, so check on that, on what happens with um, our bodies when there's oxidative stress. So I wept because I realized it was Utah. I mean, I love Utah. I didn't want to come back here. I'm not LDS, I'm sorry. And I had some really traumatic experiences when I was in middle school, junior high. That really tainted it. But God was so good and I loved being back here. The weather is wonderful. So being back in Utah has been a blessing with high school friends and all of that. But the one factor, the one factor, you guys, and for 50 years, they put fluoride in the water. Now, these are just a few things I want you to think about. Okay, you do your research. Don't just take it for me, granted. Do research on your own, as I've done extensively since learning about that. Think about this. Fluoride, we know it's good for teeth, right? And prevent teeth decay and fluorosis of the teeth. But the thing is, when we put it in the water, just think about this. Do we ever keep it in our mouth long enough for it to affect our teeth? No, we just drink it, right? We drink it. We don't every drink or every time we go to cup the first drink, do we switch around in our mouth and gargle and keep it there for a little while and swallow? We don't. We don't. So, therefore, how is it that it's really benefiting? Because when you do fluoride, do in the dental office, they will have that, and then you have to spit it out. Again, do not ingest. You do not swallow the fluoride. And it will say that on toothpaste, and it's a prescription drug. So do all these kind of have red flags and kind of like ding, 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 ding? So I, I really am perplexed too as to really how it's been that 50 years has gone by and it's never gone back to vote. 
So this past week, I called the city council, uh, Mary Kate, to inquire about being on the uh, speaking this coming Thursday, July 16th. And she asked me what it's about, and I said, well, it's about flooring. And she said, you know, we, the city council doesn't have anything to do about that because it was a vote of the people, so it has to go to a vote. But she goes, you know, the interesting thing, there is a gentleman who called me just, I don't know if it was yesterday or it was just like just recently, uh, about just that. In fact, why don't you get a hold of him? She gave me his name, Pete, da, 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 and he's in the phone book. So talk to him. We spoke, spoke for about an hour. His issues are different with his family. Very heartbreaking, 72-year-old. And, uh, and it's just God's timing. Why two people the very same week talking about the same issue, just the different diseases that the fluoride causes because of that oxidative stress. So was looking at just Brigham. But then it says, but wait, there's more cities in Brigham that are fluoridating water and have just recently fluoridated water. Again, I don't understand how can that be? How can we, we really believe that it's so good for our teeth? Because see, again, we're not swishing in our mouth and holding it, right? It goes into our, right, our stomach and small intestines where it's distributed out. It affects every cell, right? Every cell, organ, tissue in our body, it's affecting. But when we bathe, our skin, what's our biggest organ? Skin, and it absorbs, right? We're talking about newborns. Mom's formula, there's nothing on the water bill or anything that says don't put tap water in there because it's got fluoride and infants up to six, some say up to three, but whatever the age, are not to do, have fluoride. We're giving it to them. We're giving it to every single person, young and old, who are healthy or not healthy. Um, it, it's just all economic, all races, it doesn't matter. We're all getting this medication, this drug that is a prescription drug that when it is prescribed, it is specific to that person. This is the critical thing that I want you to recognize. Again, do your research. It is not sodium fluoride that is in the water. That would be way too expensive to put in the water for the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that would be drinking the water. See, there's fertilizer plants and they had a problem. When they, it was found that when they had the fertilizer plants and the, oh, that hurts so bad. When um, the toxic fumes went out of the stacks, they found that everything around the area was dying, was dying. It was called hydrofluorosilic acid. So it was, they were told you cannot expose that to the air. It's, it's a no-no. So what did they do? Brilliant people came up with the thing of, well, let's just water it. It's called scrubbing. So they water it so it doesn't go out in the air. They water it. It comes down. They put it in a tank and they take it to our water districts to then put into our water as fluoride. And if you want to check that, go to Brigham City, Utah. Uh, Google the water quality water report of 2013. Take a look. A byproduct of the hydrosilic, hydrofluorosilic acid is arsenic. So when you look down all the things that are in the water, arsenic is there. And again, they'll counter, oh my gosh, it's so small, but you know what? We drink water. I drink a lot of water. We are supposed to drink a lot of water. When does it change from a little amount to, wow, that's really going to affect the body. Hmm, I hadn't thought about that. Mm, the infants, mm, I don't know. But the fluoride, go look where it says fluoride. Okay, it says fluoride in the left. As you go over to the right where it talks about the source, where they get it from. Fertilizer is fertilizer toxic waste. It's put into our water. It's destroying our bodies. In 1970, there was a study done, a physician, and it was alarming. Doing a study about fluoridation and cancer. And the physician, notes a graph where when fluoridation happened, I can't bring this up, all of a sudden there is a, an elevation of fluoridation and over here is just the population as regular, okay? It just skyrockets cancer. Could that be what happened to my mom? Could that be what happened to my stepmom? Could that be what happens to my brother who's dealing with pancreatic cancer for over five years? So are we gonna talk about this? Are we gonna wake up and say no more? Are we going to do research and take it to the voters and say, do you want Florida in your water? We need to stand up and say, it's not safe. It takes away life. Eight weeks. I'm so sorry, but I have been.
inhale dealing with this recovery. It's been so hard. The CRPS I have has extended into my thighs and it's never gone past my lower right leg. Never. So I'm dealing with a lot and, I, and all along I really believe that it's all attributed to the fluoride. You can say, Kathy, you're just a little exaggerating. I'm not. I'm not. Do your own research. We need to talk to all the cities in Utah and get it on the ballot for Utah to say we're done with fluoridation. Let us select and let us choose if that's going to be something we do for our kids. But please don't do it for us. So I'm sorry for the tears. Please do your research on fluoride. Check with oxidative stress with whatever disease you have, whatever illness you have. Google it and if you and most likely you will find out yes, it's oxidative stress. So fluoride is one of those indicators. And if we live in a fluoridated town, that's why you've been, been sick. That's why doctors say, I don't know what else to do for you or all the medications you're on. And you shouldn't have to be. So let's talk. Let's wake up, Utah. Have a conversation. And let's make a difference in our communities, in our state. It's time. God bless. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, to... Our studies involve comparing the deaths of all persons in the 10 largest fluoridated cities of the United States with the 10 largest non-fluoridated cities in the United States year by year. And we obtained a very remarkable curve, which you can see here perhaps. Here is the fluoridated and here is the non-fluoridated set of 10 cities each. Before, here's where the fluoridation started. And before this time, both sets of cities were identical. But no sooner had fluoridation started than this curve began to go up. The deaths began to increase so that this effect occurs very promptly within one, two, or five years. Now this, sir, is conclusive evidence that fluor kills because of cancer. It is one of the most conclusive bits of scientific and biological evidence that I have come across in my 50 years in the field of cancer research.